Hello and welcome to the sixth video in this Java series for beginners. In this tutorial we're going to be looking at loops. Loops is where Java starts becoming really dynamic and we can actually control the code that we're using and we can make it repeat itself and do different things uh, on each iteration of it. So the first thing we're going to be looking at is the while loop and the while loop look, looks like this. You just write the word while and then you have uh, the open normal brackets much like the if statement and then you have the uh, spiky brackets like so. Uh, you can see it looks exactly the same as an if statement except we've written the word while. Now the difference between this while, uh, the while loop and uh, what we were doing with the if statement is uh, we both of them take uh, the boolean condition inside these brackets here except the while loop what it's going to do if this condition is true it's going to run the code inside here much like the if statement except it's not just going to run it once, it's going to keep running it over and over again until this condition in here somehow meets uh, false. So each iteration, it's going to check the condition, see if it's still true, and if it's still true, it's going to run it over and over again. It's basically a repeating if statement. Uh, so let's go ahead and write while true in here, and then we're going to say system.out.println. And we'll write hello world in there. And what this is going to do is it's going to say, okay, let's check uh, the condition. The condi the Boolean condition is true. Obviously, that is uh, the condition is true. So it's going to run the code here. Then it's going to check if the statement's still true. Obviously, it's still true. And this will uh, this true statement here would never become false because this isn't a variable. It's just uh, the literal value of true. So basically what this program is going to do is it's going to infinitely print out uh, hello world to the console and we can see this if we hit run you can see the scroll bar here just going uh, further and further down and this is just going to print out indefinitely until we go ahead and manually hit stop so obviously that's not really practical in an actual program because usually you want it to stop at some point you don't want it to just be infinitely running uh, so let's do a let's do an example here uh, let's make an integer called a and we're going to set it equal to zero. Now the condition we're going to make, we're going to say while a is less than 100, so that's our boolean condition, whilst a is less than 100, uh, we're going to print out something. Let's go ahead and print out the value for a here. So a is obviously less than 100, uh, so if we print this out, we're just going to see zero printed out infinitely much like the hello world thing that's because this a variable is never changing now that we've introduced a variable into the condition of the while loop we can actually change the while loop and uh what it does so what we'll do is we'll print out the value of a each time and then we're going to add one to it uh and i haven't introduced this uh this concept yet so to add numbers to increment a number of the same amount you can say a is equal to a plus one for example and that's perfectly valid. We're saying uh, set the variable a equal to itself, just plus one, and that basically increments it one. But there's an easier way to do it than that. Uh, we can simply just put two plus signs and then uh, finish off with a semicolon. This basically just says add one to a. That's uh, the simple way of doing it. So now this while loop has actually become uh, more dynamic because each iteration we're going to add one to a and uh, each time it's going to check if a is equal to 100. So this loop is actually going to run 100 times until finally uh, when we're on the when a is equal to 99, we're going to add one to 100. Then 100 isn't less than 100, which means that uh, the loop will have finished. Let's go ahead and add a system dot out dot print line down here. And then we'll just write loop finished. So when we hit run here, uh, it did that pretty quickly, obviously. Uh, so we can see in the console we've printed out 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, etc. And we've printed this out all the way up to 99. And then the loop finishes here. So you can see how we can make uh, our programs uh, dynamic using these uh, loops. You can make it a bigger number. Uh, it'll print out obviously up to that amount there, include all the numbers in between. And you're not limited to adding just one, you can add uh, whatever amount. So you can see how using these loops, the programs are starting to become uh, more dynamic. Uh, so there's actually um, uh, an easier way to do this thing we've done here. For example, while 
a number condition is met and then add one or add two or add three each time and then do something. There's actually an easier way to do that. It's called a for loop. So let's go ahead and uh, we'll just remove this, what we've done so far. So we'll keep this variable a here, a equal to zero. Actually, uh, we'll delete the a variable because what we're going to do is we're going to do, we're going to set up the for loop. The for loop looks like so. We write four with the brackets and then do the spike brackets like that. And then this, uh, the difference of the for loop is it doesn't actually take a Boolean value in here. The for loop needs to take uh, three parameters, each separated by semicolons. So the first parameter it's going to take is either an existing variable uh, and an, an initial value, or we can initialize a variable uh, inside the for loop. So we can make an integer called a and set it equal to zero. Then we'll put a semicolon. That's the first condition we need to set up. So the first condition inside the for loop is setting up a variable and making it equal to something. Uh, the second condition inside a for loop is setting um, the condition for the loop to run. For example, uh, in that while loop just now, we said whilst a is less than uh, 100, and then we did a is less than 1000, we can go ahead and uh, write whilst a is less than 100, for example, and then another semicolon. And then the final parameter we have to do is, um, not it's not necessary, but Obviously, if we don't want the loop to run infinitely, uh, the final parameter is uh, in what way we want to increment or decrement the value that we've initialized here. So we're going to say a plus plus. So this is our fully functioning for loop. Uh, so the first thing we do is initialize a variable, give it a value. The second thing we do is give a condition for the loop to run. And the third thing we do is increment or decrement the number. So let's go ahead and just system out print line, print out the value of a. And you'll see we don't need to increment it manually because it's doing it in the for loop. Each iteration of the for loop, it's gonna check for this uh, condition here. And then at the end of each for loop, at the end of uh, the code running in here, it's just gonna increment it the way we've told it to. So you can see it did the exact same thing, uh, but just in a different uh, form of syntax here. And there's, uh, for loops are useful for when we start looking at arrays, which we will do soon. Um, but for now, this example is good enough. Uh, we initialize a variable, we give it a condition, and then we can uh, plus or minus uh, values to it. And you're not limited to adding one. Uh, there's another way you uh, can increment numbers. If you just want to increment one, you do the plus plus. If you want to increment a certain value to it, you can put plus equals and then a number. And that's basically... Uh, this plus equals here, you can also do minus equals. Uh, the plus equals basically says uh, add the number on the left, add the number on the right, sorry, to the number, uh, to the variable on the left. And if we run this here, adding two at a time, you'll see we only get the even numbers here because we're adding two at a time, obviously. So uh, that's how we do the for loop. And there's one final loop going back to the first while loop that we had. Um, there's one final loop I want to show you, and that is the do while loop. And the do while loop is slightly different from the while loop. Uh, the do while loop basically makes sure the code inside the while loop is run at least once, regardless of whether the condition is met or not. So let's go ahead and make an integer a equal to 10. And let's go ahead and set up the do while loop. So we can say do with no, do, the, the word do doesn't need any parameters here. We just have the spike brackets. But then at the end of the spike brackets here, we do need to set up the while condition. So after this uh, ending spike bracket, we can write while and then give a condition. So we can say while a is less than 10. And then we can put a semicolon. So you can read this as do the code inside the brackets here. Uh, while this condition is equal to true. Uh, so why is this one useful compared to the normal while loop? Well, like I said, it's because the code is run uh, regardless of whether the initial condition was met or not. So let's go ahead and add system out print line. Ooh, right, hello world. Uh, let's remove this loop finish down here. So as you can see, if this was a normal while loop, uh, the condition a is less than 10 uh, would be false because a is equal to 10 
and 10 is not less than 10. So if this was a normal while loop, uh, if this was up here, uh, for example, let's go ahead and run that, you can see that nothing appears because while this condition is met, and this condition isn't met because 10 is not less than 10. Uh, this code never runs here. So if we just move that back down there, uh, the do part of this loop basically ensures this code is run at least once before checking this. It basically means the code is run and then the condition is checked as opposed to the condition checked and then the code is run. So if we run this, we'll see we get the hello world printed out. Uh, so we say do the hello world statement here and now check if this statement's true, and then it says, okay, this condition isn't met, we're not going to do the loop again, and then we move to the code down here. So that is the difference between the while loop and the do while loop, and also the for loop.